now turn me into Angela. But I call her Ye. Way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my really fun guest co host Candace is here with me all week. Good morning. On a hump day. It is hump day. Yes, we it made is. it. Okay. Y'all almost, made it. Almost. Yes. yes. And, and I believe your husband comes in town today. Well, okay. He was coming, uh-huh. but his job wants to steal his soul. Okay. Shout out. We, we love his job. <laughs> so he now has meetings that are preventing him from frolicking with me in the city. Okay. Well, it happens. Yes. It happens. When you're you married to a, a man time. who works, because people think he doesn't work, okay? <laughs> the man works, and he's busy. Uh, yes, but I'll see him when I get home. All right. Well, we also have a fun show for you today. It is a Wealth Wednesday. Yes. So I have a special guest, Marcus Collins. He is the author of For the Culture, Dr. Marcus Collins, but he's also a professor at University of Michigan. Um, the power behind what we buy, what we do, and who we want to be. And he's been behind a lot of really great and successful campaigns, mm. but he did work at Steve Stout's translation agency. See, he helped the beginning of the Beehive when that first got started. Oh, wow. It was actually called Something Else, and we'll talk about it in the interview. Okay. And so he'll be able to discuss how the infamous Beehive yes, uh, beginnings were. Yeah, so that whole branding, marketing, why we buy the things that we do, nice. all of those are important conversations, as we also are having conversations about why diversity is important yes. in the workforce. DEI is not dead. Right. Okay. Well, they're trying to kill Contrary it. Contrary to popular belief, it's not dead. You got <laughs> Gotta keep it going. But yes. let's get this show off with some love and positivity. Let's shine a light. 800-292-5150 is the number. Call us up and let us know who you want to shine a line on. But this song's for you, Candice, Miss Independent. Hey. It's way up. I'll take it. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's Way Up and Candace. Candace Diller Bassett is here with me hey, all hey, week. Hey. I'm going to miss you when you leave. I know. I was thinking, like, wait, I have to go home. <laughs> but Sad. let's spread some love. Let's shine a light. Today, I want to shine a light on a Detroiter, Katrina Bellin. She just recently unveiled the Pink Diamond Beauty Mall, and that is mm-hmm. on the Avenue of Fashion on Livernoy in Detroit. And that is going to be a space that is now being dubbed Michigan's first ever beauty mall. Ooh. They'll have manicures, Facials, massage therapy, lash extensions, a meditation room, yoga, Reiki, spiritual guidance, and a whole lot more. So fortunately for her, she got the Motor City Match Grant. And that was a grant that she applied for several times. She finally ended up getting it. Congrats. She got $50,000 in 2022, which helped her actually finish these renovations wow. to be able to open up the space and get this dream accomplished. So Good shout out for to her. you. Yes. All right. Shout out to you, Katrina. We will be at Pink Diamond Beauty Mall when we're in Detroit. Um, so the space is is finally open. Yes. So congratulations. I love that name. Pink Diamond. Pink Diamond. All right. Now, who do you guys want to shine a light on? 800-292-5150. Dwayne, who you want to shine a light on? Yeah, I just want to shine a light on my wife, Jacoya. Oh. And I want to know, I want to tell her that she's doing an amazing job at raising my son and that all of her actions are being watched. I love her and have a productive oh, that's week. That's sweet. We need more men like you in the world. Yes, because <laughs> being a mother is hard work. Being a wife is hard work, and being appreciated is under. It's, it doesn't happen enough. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I just want her. I just want to let her know that her. I can't even pronounce it. I can't even say what I want to say because she's that much of a good person. Aww. Okay, I like to hear that. Yes. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's Thank right. you for calling. Thank you. That was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150, in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have your Yee Tea. And so much Love is Blind. Candace is so into Love is Blind now. But I'm I'm kind of obsessed a little bit, yes. Well, Clay will be on the show tomorrow. And we have a little preview for you guys, because there's been a lot of drama behind the scenes. So we're going to give you a little something in Yee Tea when we come back. It's exclusive. It's way up. Way up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. Yee T time. You ready for this, Candace? My tea is piping hot. 
All right. Well, Candace, um, Love is Blind. Yes. I feel like this season six, there's been a lot of things happening after right. the finale. The drama here. is post-show. All right. So one thing that happened is AD. I think AD and Clay, their relationship was probably the most talked about relationship on the show. Yes. And AD recently did an interview with Kami Crawford. My homegirl. That's your homegirl. Thank you. Thank you. Your pageant, sis. Yes. And one thing that she talked about was finances because Clay, after he said no at the altar, was discussing how he didn't really understand her work schedule, her finances. Right. Well, here's what AD had to say about that. My finances have never been funny. When we came back, I was like, hey, look, I'm good. I set myself up and I understand that he wanted to see like what it was like. But I told him in the pods, like I'm leaving my club job. So he's like, no, AD, I really just need to see you go to work. And he didn't understand how I could stay afloat because I wasn't working a nine to five. If you want to see my bank account, you want to see my what I have going for me. Mm -hmm. You could have asked. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, you know, Clay came up here and spoke to us. He did. And the full interview will air tomorrow. And it's a really good one. It is. And here's what he had to say about AD's finances and why that is important to him. I wasn't never saying that. AD's finances was a reason why we wouldn't be together. I was saying that I didn't understand it enough for us to get married at this time. We talked about the finances in the pods. What I saw from AD in the pods was a little bit different than what I saw when we were together. We vibed off of entrepreneur spirit. We vibed off of working hard. And then when I felt like when we came back to the house, uh -huh. she dedicated all her time to be a wife. And that's cool and everything, but that's not what, really what I like fell in love with her about. Mm -hmm. I... I take issue with him saying, I need to see you go to work. Like, <laughs> what do that mean? Well, he explains it a lot more in the interview, but I yes. guess for him, seeing the motivation, seeing you actually, because he's like, how are you able to not do anything mm -hmm. this whole time and right. not be committed to work? And right. some people, and he's he said, that's fine. Some people are like, okay, I just want to be a wife and that's what I'm here mm -hmm. for. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I guess for him, he needs to see you being like, I got to get right. up and out of Grinding. He, yeah. he has a that's day job. Mindset. And he has a, a right. side hustle. Right, right, right. So you he know. wants a woman who moves like him in the work environment. Right, he's attracted yes. to that. Well, interestingly enough, now one of his groomsmen mm. has spoken out on social media and said, I'm Clay's best friend. Mm -hmm. And we've both been living out in Charlotte for years now. AD finances are, in fact, funny. Mm. She has a sugar daddy that is funding her life, bought her a car, an apartment. She's not a realtor. Ask her to show us one house she sold or a picture she took with someone in front of the house. She just sold them. I'll wait. The never to do a press run to lie... The never to do a press run to lie on a dude that has said nothing but kind, respectful things about her is nasty work. And then he also mm. said to Kami Crawford, mm -hmm. he added her, November 2023, around her birthday, her sugar daddy confronted Clay and I outside the club, stating he was still involved with her and had been the entire time and told Clay to stop messing with her. Mm. Now, why he have so much smoke for AD? What did AD <laughs> do to him? I guess he doesn't like AD talking about him in a negative way mm -hmm. on these podcasts and with these interviews and yeah. saying, why don't you tell the whole truth? Well, she's telling her story and Clay is now having an opportunity to tell his side of the story. And I think it's fair that they both give their versions. There's two sides and then the truth is in the middle. And I also feel like if Clay wanted that information out, if that really happened, he would have said it. Maybe, or may maybe he was protecting her, and right. his best so friend if he was wanted not. it out. He yes. said. So yeah. I feel like that's not somebody else's place. It's not best friend. You out of line. You need to to sit say down. that because Clay's probably like, Ugh, I'm not trying to drag this out. Right. But like I said, you'll hear the full interview tomorrow, and I'm sure there's going to be more back and forth um, regarding what he's had to say. For sure. All right. Well, yeah. that is your yt. And when we come back, we have about last night. That's where we discuss what we did last night. I actually was at the Pfizer headquarters. Yes. yesterday and I'll talk about busy that bee. and you'll tell us what you've been doing in yes. New York because you're a busy bee too it's way up last night so about last night last night last night here's how it went down Yes, it's way up, and I'm here. Candace is here. What's up, Candace? Hey. And listen, we are, uh, by the way, got a chance to see your looks. 
for Real Housewives of Potomac, the reunion. Oh, Your yes. dress is amazing. Thank you. Shout out to Katia, my custom gown designer. She came in in the 11th hour and made that gown. I love it. And I, you know whose dress I also really liked a lot? Karen. Karen looked up. Uh, she was, it was sickening. Yeah. Head to toe. The she hair. She looked really, really great. Makeup. She killed it. And she, it was like, in person, she almost looked like a doll. Well, shout out to you, Karen, for that, that dress. Yes. Everything was amazing. Yes. Um, now, let us talk about what we did last night. Besides me yes. seeing that, what did you do last night? I went to, do you know Monkey Bar? Yes. I went to Monkey Bar. So, oh, nice. Well, I went to Soho House and met with a friend. And mm-hmm. then I was on the way home and another friend called and said, come to Monkey Bar. <laughs> so I like made a U-turn and went there and hung out. They have the most amazing dessert. Okay. Like banana split, Ooh, I don't carrot know I cake. Can... I love a carrot cake. Um, Sorbet. We had like a spread of desserts. It's on my Insta story. Like I, I went home and I Let coma. me take a look at it. Dessert is my favorite part of every meal. Mine too. Yeah, I look so, at the menu for dessert first. So I'm going to have to go there so just good. for that purpose. Yes. Um. Well, yesterday when I left here, I went to Pfizer's headquarters. Yes. And that's in New York City in Hudson Yards. They have like a new headquarters. By the way, very beautiful and okay, nice. Okay. And so we were there doing a whole coffee presentation. And nice. this is all like in the hopes of them using us for enterprise. And so yes. when you go to, to work and you have yep. coffee at work, right. we're hoping to to continue that relationship. So we're doing Pfizer. Yes. We have American Express. And that's where my coffee company, Coffee Uplifts People. Yes. You know, a lot of times at work, people have coffee that's free at work, but it ain't right. like the top it, of the line. Right. So we're just trying to provide things like great coffee. Luxury so coffee. So that you can come to work and right. be like, mm, I want my coffee exactly. at work. <laughs> be excited to come to work for at least the coffee. And then not only that, but we did sit and talk on a panel with um, me, me and my partner, Tony Forte, and mm-hmm. our head of product, uh, Chef Jen. So we were able to sit there and just talk about how we even started the business nice. and where we get our coffee beans from. Ooh. And even the whole process of from the farm, we know who our farmers are that own the farms where we get the beans from. Wow. And then our importer, she's a black woman based out of Georgia. And wow. then our roaster is based out of Maryland. Wow. A black woman in Maryland. She's the person who roasts our beans. Shout out to Candy. Shipley. Yes. Um, so just the whole process of how we get our beans from the farm into the shop yeah. is something that we're involved with from, from the beginning. You are so. so impressive. Like Oh, thank you. You're like you are the epitome of like a girl boss. Oh well thank it's you. Very inspiring. And then the other thing we did yesterday is, you know, I have a juice bar in Brooklyn yep. also called the Nourish Spot. And so we just added some new things to the menu. So we have these huge Belgian waffles mm. um, that just got added to the menu today. My mouth just watered. And they are amazing. We have acai bowls. Now we have these Belgian waffles. And we also have some coffee shakes now. So when you go in there, you can get some uh, banana dipped coffee shakes. I love that. So make sure you come see us. I'm working. Besides working. We see you. Working and working. Yes. All right. Well, when we come back, let's do some more work. Let's hear some secrets. Oh. Okay. Candace, I know you like this. You like the little drama. You you know. You know, maybe just a tiny bit. But 800-292-5150 is a number. Call us up and tell us a secret. We're not here to judge you. We just want to hear your secrets. You are anonymous. Yes. 1-800-292-5150. Tell us a secret. It's way out. No. Way up. Shh. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. All right. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Candace is here. And Candace um, has been telling us all kinds of secrets in between the music yes. and the commercials. Yes. But right now it's your turn to call us up. 800-292-5150 is a number. Now remember, Candace, this is a no judgment zone. I'm going to do my best. But sometimes it'd be a little hard. You, my eyebrow might go up. But that's fine. Yeah. All right. Because you guys are anonymous and we yes. are not here to judge you. We don't know your past. We don't. We don't know why you're doing these things that you're doing. Yes. But we you're do, human. You're human. Yes. And we want you to be able to release. Yes. These Let secrets it out. Into the universe. And yes. maybe it'll make us all a better person. Right. Okay. You're going to liberate somebody. 800-292-5150 is a number. Hello, anonymous Carla. What's your secret? Yeah. So my problem is that I'm doing this with somebody and we keep saying that we're cousins, but we're really not cousins. Okay, so you are saying that you guys are cousins. Like, oh, yeah, that's my cuz. Right. Is it like a cover yeah. so you don't have to, so people won't know that you're sleeping together? Yes. You guys, it's like saying that's my bro, uh-huh. but really you're sleeping yeah, with right. bro. Yeah. Uh, why don't y'all just be honest? What's the problem? A lot going on. A lot going on. Okay. Okay, so you guys are both in relationships? <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, okay. I know. Yeah, it has to be something <laughs> like that. All yeah. right, and so and and you think they believe you, or is like your girl jealous of your quote cousin? Mm-hmm. 
Wait, oh, he is sitting in... with a guy. Okay. So you leaving yeah. out the juicy yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm like... That's like, important. Okay, so, so basically you're bisexual. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, you're sleeping with your fake male cousin. Got it. And, but so your girl doesn't suspect a thing. No. Okay. Well, are you using protection? Yeah, all the time. Okay. You mm-hmm. need to break up with your girl and just be be with your boo. Be happy. Yes. Living your truth. Because it feels like that's who you really I'm like. I a commitment with a guy. I don't want a commitment with a guy. That's the thing. You just want to play around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, why don't you play around with your guy, cousin, not cousin, and let your girl go so she can, you know, be free and not think that you all are in a real relationship. All right, yeah, that works. So not right now. You I got to have a kid first. Oh, oh don't Lord. Don't do that to her. Uh, okay, well, look, we're not here to judge we're you. We're not. Yeah, we're you know, not. At least you have a plan. They want me to come up and do my own interview at the show. <laughs> so you want people to know? No, I mean, I'm ready to tell my story. I can make money over there, but I'm sure to go ready to tell my story. I've got a lot to tell. All right, hold on. We'll see. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> What's up, Anonymous Caller? How are you? I'm okay. How you doing? I'm good. It's me and Candace, and we're going to be quiet and listen to your secret. No judgment. I've been with my girl for about four years, mm-hmm. and she have a younger sister, and I'm always mean to her. Mm-hmm. My girl always asks why I'm being mean to her. Mm-hmm. I just tell her she's just stupid, but in reality, I got a sexual fetish for her. A fetish? A sexual fetish? Why is it a fetish? She feels good as hell. So you've been with her? So you've acted on this mm-hmm. this, this fetish? No, 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 no. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just slightly stupid. Good to yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, I, I, I can dream, but I ain't gonna act on it. Okay, okay, so you just fantasize about her. But, yes. You think your girl kind of knows that, though, with because you're being mean? No, she has no clue. Okay. Mm. See, that's what that's like little boys. You know how they're mean because yes, they have a crush? right, yep. It's very schoolboy. Yeah, so I, 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 I be mean to her to keep her away from me. Mm, keep okay. her away. Well, let's keep doing yeah, that. Let's keep her away for real. Yes. Long All right, term. but thank you for calling and sharing with us. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> the guys it. are acting up to Y'all need to get it together. All right, well, that was Tell Us a Secret, 800 292 5150. You can always leave a message just in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have your ET. And let's talk about Elon Musk and Don Lemon. When yes. you hear the things that Don Lemon was asking Elon Musk for when they were supposed to be doing their deal together for his show on X. Yes. You're going to be like, all right, this is wild. But when you hear these demands, what you doing? We'll discuss. It's way up. Oh, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that yee (laughs) tea. Come and get the tea. All right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee and Candice from Real Housewives of Potomac is here today. Hello. Hello. And let's get into some Yee tea. Yes. All right, Don Lemon, according to reports, he had some things that he wanted from Elon Musk in order to be able to do his show on X that he was supposed to do, but it has since been canceled. Yes. Now, one of the wish list of demands that he had was a free cyber truck. <laughs> All right. He also <laughs> wanted to launch into orbit to do the first ever podcast from outer space. Okay. Uh, and the other things that he asked for was a $5 million advance, as well as an $8 million base salary, equity in the company, mm. and veto power over the site's news content policies and its roster of creators. Uncle Don. I mean, if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. I applaud him for putting himself <laughs> out there, but... Uncle Don, it's a bit much. That's a, he also, they said, requested a private jet ferry him and his partner to Vegas for a tech conference. And they had to also pay for the plane and also for a stay at a hotel on the strip, mm. um, amongst other things. This is why you don't tell people how much money you have. Because we know how much Elon has. So now Don is pushing the envelope. Although, you know, Elon wants you to know he's the rich. He wants to be the richest man. And he well, wants you to know that. Well, that's why people now, are asking to go into space on your dime. If you guys recall, Don Lemon did actually do a full interview with Elon Musk. Elon Musk was like, normally I wouldn't have done this, but because he was supposed to be on my platform, I did it. Right. And Don Lemon has since posted this full interview, and uh, some of the snippets had made their rounds last week. Yes. This was one where you can see Elon is uh, definitely Noticeably. annoyed by the questions. Yes. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? Choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. 
Okay, but so is this same, the question you want to ask? Same question is you said you said that they are killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you. I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment, and I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. <laughs> he didn't answer the question at all. Yeah, and let's, listen, it's not a bad question to ask, but I guess you know you can watch the full interview. And Elon Musk said he pulled the plug after Don Lemon was dull and underwhelming, and that Ooh. he had no wish to indulge in Don Lemon's approach, which Ooh. was basically just CNN but on social media. Well, that sounds like a projection because Elon was kind of dull and underwhelming, in my <laughs> humble opinion. Yeah, he could have livened it up. Yeah, sometimes when interviews are dull and underwhelming. You need to liven it up as the person being interviewed. Yes. All right. Now, Beyonce is talking about why she decided to make her Cowboy Carter country album. By the way, that is coming out on March 29th. Yes. And she said um, her latest project was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed. And it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. And... And, you know, this is why we are now getting a Beyonce country album. She's clearly talking about, right, the CMAs when she did that collab with the chicks, Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And we could see, remember in the audience, you cut cut away and people in the audience were noticeably, like, irritated that she was there. And there's been this history in country music of black people not being accepted. And so also, I'm happy for her. You could have a whole country song and yeah. they'll be like, this isn't country right. music. Right, because it's a black person. Even if it is. And there are so many talented black country artists. So I'm happy that she, she, her, by her doing this, she's liberating and giving a spotlight to other black country artists. I love that. All right. Well, that is your Yeti. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They are flying under the radar. Um, AI, whether or not you like it it's Mm. here to stay and youtube is going to have some requirements now when it comes to ai content it's way up under the radars next in the news that relates to you these stories are flying under the radar it's way up with angela yee and candace is here and we are going under the radar these are stories that are not necessarily in the headlines they're under the radar all right youtube says they will now prompt users to say whether their videos have altered or synthetic content That appears to be real. This is all because of artificial intelligence. Yes. You want to make sure you know what you're watching. There's a lot of deep fakes out there. That's fair. Yeah. Yes. Keep it real. Have you been fooled by any deep fakes? I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like somebody did a an AI of me holding a baby. What? And I was like, did I have a baby? It literally was a baby light skin. No, it was brown. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta make sure. (laughs) Right. Yes. It was a brown baby. See. I'm being enabled. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So now that they're saying on Monday, um, they'll ask users uploading new videos to answer yes or no to whether or not their videos contain altered content. And then they'll ask if any of the following describes their content, makes a real person appear to say or do something they didn't say or do, mm. alters footage of a real event or place, or generates a realistic looking scene that didn't actually occur. And then if you answer yes, to any of those they'll put a label on the video description that says altered or synthetic content now how will we know if people lie like is there like a mark in the code Uh, for them to check i mean maybe they'll take it down they said they'll penalize users who consistently choose um not to to, yeah to not give that label and disclose that information good and then they said they may also add the label in some cases where they feel like people may be confused or misled All right. Now, U.S. consumers are paying an average of $61 a month for video streaming services. That's a lot. Mm -mm. Bring back cable. I'm (laughs) sick and tired of all these streaming sites and having to log in to this one and that one. I'm over it. Just bring back cable. On each television. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even have cable anymore now. Do you want to watch live TV? Yeah. Do you want to watch on demand? Yeah. Um, I have cable on one television, but then you can put it on all of them. Yes. So I think that makes sense. I have YouTube TV. Okay. And that has like a realistic cable looking platform. Right. And we pay like, I think it's like $60. See? And there that's you on go. all the TV. $61 a month. Yeah. Right? All right. Now, Bob Marley, in the meantime, that One Love movie has gotten its digital release date. Um, so it's out yesterday, Yay. actually. So you can watch that uh, digitally now. And the movie did open strong. It broke records on Valentine's Day and it had a 92% audience approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. Um, and yeah, you can also get that. I guess it's going to be on Blu ray. I don't know who has a DVD player. 
I don't, like, yeah. where would you plug it in? I don't know where I would plug it in. Anymore, but um, after its $169 million theatrical run, yeah. now you can watch it digitally. So there you have it. It's been a success. We love that for Bob Marley. All right. Well, that is your Under the Radar. Now, you know, we have the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. Plus, we have marketer extraordinaire and professor Dr. Marcus Collins joining us for Wealth Wednesday. He has a book out now. It's called For the Culture, The Power Behind What We Buy, What We Do, and Who We Want to Be. You'll get to hear him talk all about the creation of the Beehive Love and it. what it was initially about to be called. He did work with Steve Stout for a period of time. And there's a lot of different campaigns that he was very instrumental in. We all know Obey Your Thirst yes. from Sprite, but now thirst means something different. So yes. it kind of changed the meaning of Obey Your Thirst. Just all of the things that you don't think about when it comes to advertising. All right? That's happening today on a Wealth Wednesday. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Angela's spilling that yee Talk to him. All right. Ooh, we just ate. It's way up. I'm still licking <laughs> plantains from my teeth. <laughs> and Candace is here, guest hosting. Shout out to Jasmine's Caribbean yes. Cuisine. We Thank just you. had some rasta pasta, some brown stew chicken, some plantains, some, broccoli. some rice and peas. Yes. yes, and vegetables. And vegetables. Yes, <laughs> yes very important. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into some yee tea. Tracy Morgan was on Jimmy Fallon, and he said that he actually gained 40 pounds on weight loss drugs. Here's what he said. You look great. How, yeah. how, how you staying in shape these days? Well, that's Ozempic. Yeah, but I've learned to eat. I'll, 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 I'll eat Ozempic. I gained 40 pounds. You, oh, really? Yeah, I gained I've 40 never heard anyone gaining 40 pounds. Absolutely. I'm like Magic Johnson. I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, listen, I don't know if he's really taking it or not, but um, he said he gets up at 7 every morning and he's in the gym at 10. And then he said, I go back to sleep and that's my life. Oh, wow. That's a nice life. Yeah. That's... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. All right. Willa Smith is Dior Beauty's new international beauty ambassador. Yes. So congratulations to her. I did that for you, Candace. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I First of all, I think Willa was amazing. I think she's an amazing singer. And I think that's an interesting collab because Dior is... I, I, like, I don't think that I would put them together because she's like very eccentric and Dior seems like more traditional. Okay. But I love that I they're like that. stepping out and maybe showing that they want to... Yeah, she, she's one of three muses that they have for their upcoming beauty collection. She is beautiful, right. though. She's, yes, beautiful, talented. Love her. All right. Now, J. Cole has parted ways with Puma, and he's starting his own sneaker brand. So congratulations to him for that. His own Dreamer sneaker brand, the Dreamer 5000. So there's no details on when it will be released or what the retail price will be. But we know people are super excited yes. for his first sneaker drop. I'm looking at pictures of the sneakers, too. So congratulations to him on that. Super cute. That's how you get to the shmoney, okay, yes. baby? Yeah. All right, and Portia and Nene leaks. The saga continues. Oh, Lord. Now, we were up here the other day. Yes. With disgusting. some inside information about the Upshaws. Yes. Um, I guess Portia refused to work with Nene on the Upshaws because of their past issues. Mm -hmm. Nene didn't know they still had issues. Mm -hmm. You said they even had reached out to you. They did. They mm -hmm. Upshaws reached out to me. They reached out to Kenya. I saw. She mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So they were just looking for all the housewives. But I was... I was surprised because there was no context when Nene first brought this up. Mm -hmm. But these text messages that were released give context. All right. So the messages read like this. Yes. Hey, Portia. I hope you're doing well. I am shocked to hear that we have issues and you don't want to work with me. Wow. Just wow. We have <laughs> double dated a few times. Vegas, Miami, your home, etc. It's sad to hear. We've hung out in Dubai. You were texting me about housewives. This is sad. We are black women that need to work, not stopping each other from working. Mm. And then and what did Portia say? Portia says, yeah, all that and through all this. And this is your first text. How? Who? And how the F do you not even check on, quote, little sis? Mm. Enough said. You chose a side and I'm good with that. People weird as F. I've shown you loyalty time and time again. I've also shown concern and genuine love during all your hardships, but I've never get gotten it back. It's cool. When people move differently, so do I. Ooh, and then Nene responded, you are wrong. Mm. All caps. In every way, you went extremely too far. Mm. Nothing you are saying is valid enough to go to a production company and say, you do not want to work with Nene because we have issues in the past. My God, today. Mm-hmm. I gave you your space. I didn't want to invade your privacy. I didn't want to seem nosy. I wanted to wait until I see you in person. Person, I was excited about working with you. Yes. Mm, so, what do you think about this? Because then, after that, Nini was pictured. Yes. As we discussed, posing before. with Simon. Simon and a new boo or friend, as yeah. he called her. Just a friend. So, 
I now I understand Portia a little bit better. Okay. Yes, I think that she was hurt because she didn't feel like Nene reached out to her, and then she was. I think she maybe heard that Simon was hanging out with Nene, mm -hmm. and she felt like this is my friend. She didn't call me, so I'm upset. I don't want to work with her. Okay. So that context and Nene still was got missing. The, Nene still did the job, right? She did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she she still got her bag, and I get her having issue with Portia speaking about her but I get why Portia was upset now it makes more sense alright well that is your Yeti acted out yes by Angela <laughs> Yee and Candace Diller Bassett give and us our Emmy <laughs> and when we come back we have Ask Yee 800-292-5150 any question that you have we're here to help you out it's way up whether it's relationship or career advice Angela's dropping facts so you should, so you should know this is Ask Yee What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Candace is here with me today. What's up? At today, tomorrow, and Friday. So, you know, just enjoy this while you can. <laughs> um, and now it's time for Ask Yee. 800-292-5150 is a number. Hello, anonymous caller. This person doesn't want to reveal their name. What's your question okay. for Ask Yee? So, it's a tough one. Okay. Um, my friend that I normally go out with on the weekend, I just found out the bar that we normally go to He's being accused of rape. Ooh. Mm. All right, so give yeah. us, like, who is accusing him? What is he saying? So he had sex with a young lady at a bar mm -hmm. a couple weekends ago. Mm. And apparently that same night, she also had sex with two other guys. And she's claiming that she didn't consent to those sexual encounters. Okay. Was she drunk? And Yeah, she was very drunk. Okay. All right. She might have a point. Y yeah. If she didn't consent whether she was drunk or not, mm -hmm. it's a problem. And so I don't think he's aware that he's being accused of this. Was he drinking? Yes, he was drinking. But he, according to the, because the, the bouncer told me this. So according to the bouncer, he left. So when he left, she was like, oh, making a whole scene out of it. And they called the cops. And wow. but she decided she didn't want to press charges. She didn't want to do a rip case. Mm. So. Uh, what the bouncer was telling me is that he's not aware that she's accusing them of rape, but they know I know him because we always go to the bar together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so they want you to tell him. Well, I, I don't know. That's what. That's kind of where I need the help. Yeah, you definitely you should, should tell yeah, him. Definitely tell him. He needs to know that that's attached to his name. He needs to know so he can figure out what his next steps are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whether or not this woman is going to end up saying that he raped her mm -hmm. or whether, you know, I don't know because obviously none of us, I wasn't there. Right. We don't know what happened. But this is a lesson for, yes. for him too, regardless of what happens moving forward. Yeah. How do you, how do you open the door for that kind of conversation? You sit him down and, mm -hmm. and sober, sit him down at home and say, yo, we have some serious things to I, talk about. That we need to discuss. Yes, and just tell him what you know. And you that's know, all you can. And I'm sure that they told you that because you know him, and they want you to tell him. Correct. And it's clearly okay. concerning you. You're clearly, you know, bothered by it, and it's concerning you. So you you want to get it off of your conscience. And, and let wouldn't him... you want to know if it was you? Like if something like this happened, very good. You point. would want him to tell you. Yes, you're right. Okay. Yeah, but it's, There's no yeah. gentle way to put it. Right. It's it's a heavy topic, but it's some, it's important that he be able to take responsibility for whatever he needs to be responsible. Because guess what? He's going to end up going back to this bar. Right. right. And imagine him going there not knowing that this is happening. I would rather yeah. you tell him yeah. than the bouncer tells him. Right. Or he sees the girl and God knows what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. All right. All right. Perfect. Good luck. Right, thank you. Yeah, thank that's you. it's hard for everybody involved in this situation. All right. Well, that is your Ask Ye 800-292-5150 in case you couldn't get through. You can also weigh in and leave a message, too, for Last Word. And when we come back, it is a Wealth Wednesday. We have Marcus Collins joining us. He's the author of For the Culture, The Power Behind What We Buy, What We Do, and Who We Want to Be. It's way up. Had a dream of living wealthy. And I don't mind sharing my wealth, dog. Getting you straight financially, mentally, and and physically, this is Wealth Wednesday on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and we are blessed to have a best selling author, uh, Marcus Collins, author of For the Culture The Power Behind What We Buy, What We Do, and Who We Want to Be.
All right. So, Marcus, what exactly um, would you describe your background in? Because uh, when you read this book, we hear about all the different places where you worked, and you're very strategic. My background has been very diverse. I was an engineer undergrad because I did well in math and science as a kid. And when you're black and you're from Detroit, you go into engineering if you do well in math and science. <laughs> but I decided to go into the music business wrote music uh didn't do that well so i went back to school to get my mba went out to go work at apple and while i was there i met a guy named matthew knowles mm -hmm. who's beyonce's father and he goes we're familiar well you should run digital strategy for beyonce and i go yeah i should totally do that and so i ran digital strategy for beyonce during the i am sasha fierce days and ended up going into the world of advertising thanks to a gentleman named steve stout right now i'm talking to author and professor marcus collins he's the author of for the culture and one thing you talk about in your book, the difference between fans and believers, mm -hmm. right? So Beyonce had the beehive. That's right. But you guys actually tried to start a different group prior to that. So talk about the Beyonce versus yeah. the beehive. <laughs> yeah. So a part of the job running digital strategy was about moving her offline fan club online. This is like the days of Facebook and Twitter is doing really well. So this is going to be an easy thing. This is Beyonce moving from the artist to Queen B as we know her. And we launched this thing and it just <laughs> did not really happen. And we're like, what's going on? Why isn't this taking off <laughs> relative to her celebrity? I mean, she's still huge, right? And the team saw this little small group of people in the recesses of the internet who called themselves the Beehive. And they didn't just like Beyonce's songs. They subscribed to the same belief as Beyonce did, women's mm -hmm. empowerment. And these folks not only do they believe, but they use the music as a way to express their identity. Mm -hmm. They had their own language, they had their own cultural behaviors. We said, those are the folks we should be working with. So we cut bait on the beehive, on the Beyontourage <laughs> and made the Beehive her official fan club. And I think that has been sort of a rocket fuel to catapult her from being just an artist to being an iconic status, not unlike the Taylor Swift of the world. She mm -hmm. has Swifties. The Swifties. Right, so these are people who go beyond just being fans, but they're part of a community. And that's what culture really is about. Culture is a meaning-making system. It's a way by which we see the world. And because of the way we see the world, we navigate the world accordingly. We buy what we buy, go where we go, marry who we marry, go, work where we work, uh, vacation where we vacation, eat where we eat, bury the dead if we bury the dead. These things are all byproducts of our cultural subscription. And the more we understand that, the more likely we are to tap into it. That's interesting because you guys had to create a fan base for somebody when one did already organically exist. Mm -hmm. And so the better idea was not to try to push and force this Beyonce on us. <laughs> That's right. And <laughs> but, that, yeah. like, but to your point, like you don't make communities, you don't build communities, you facilitate them. And sometimes corporations don't understand that. That's right. All right, Marcus Collins is here. He is a best-selling author and an award-winning marketer. He's led music initiatives for iTunes and Nike and has helped organizations from Fortune 500 companies to startups and nonprofits create culturally contagious ideas. We have more with Marcus when we come back. It's way up. Dream of living wealthy. And I don't mind sharing my wealth, dog. Getting you straight financially, mentally, and physically. This is Wealth Wednesday on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee on this Wealth Wednesday, and I have author and award-winning marketer Marcus Collins here with me. And as the world is always changing, campaigns have to change, too. That's right. And you talk about that a lot in this book as well. Some campaigns that may have gotten stale and needed a refresh, and now I want to talk about a couple of them. Okay. Um, you <laughs> talked about the uh, Budweiser you know, as a brand yeah. and how, what's up? That was a, a pretty popular thing that they mm -hmm. had, but then it ran its course. That's right. Talk about how you guys have to reset. Yeah. Well, culture is always changing. Mm -hmm. Since culture is always moving, the same way you communicate a thing isn't going to work when things have come out of style, right? You know, we, we did a campaign for Sprite. You know, Obey your thirst. Yeah, exactly. So we took Obey your thirst for the 90s and brought it back, um, you know, saying, you know, only for the thirsty. But the meaning of thirst was no longer like yeah, it was in like, the 90s. Go after what you care about. Be thirsty. Exactly. It's a terrible thing. No one wants to be thirsty. The meaning <laughs> of thirst had changed and therefore the communications didn't work. Mm -hmm. So with Budweiser, Budweiser was sort of the Americana brand. It stood for Americanism. But patriotism in the early 2010s wasn't about flag waving. It was about the dream. I believe in the American dream. And we thought, who is the most, the most demonstrative representation of that? Jay-Z. So we partnered with Jay-Z, 
with Budweiser, with Live Nation to create the Made in America Festival that celebrated the makers of tomorrow. See, I didn't realize that's how Made in America came about. Yeah. I, it just felt like a whole separate thing. Like, oh, he's doing a festival now. Yeah. Right now, I'm talking to author and professor Marcus Collins. He's the author of For the Culture. And another <laughs> campaign that was amazing that you worked in was Travis Scott and McDonald's. Yes. All right. So tell me how that came into fruition and what was behind that. So McDonald's and Wyden Kennedy, the agency I was, I was most recently at, <clears throat> McDonald's has been battling a lot of hate for a very long time. They were the punching bag for everything wrong with the American diet. Uh, so McDonald's says, hey, Wyden Kennedy, help us navigate the hate. And Wyden says, you know, people definitely hate you, but 68 million people show up at your door every single day. That's a lot of love. <laughs> they hate, they love you. Watch your focus on those folks. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we never thought about it that way. <laughs> so we asked, so who, who are these people? Who are these fans who love you so much? And what the team found is what we called fan truths. These are like specific, shareable, special little things about being a McDonald's fan. For instance, your friend will ask for fries even though they say they didn't want any fries. Right. right? So we found all these fan truths, but the most profound fan truth was this. No matter how big, how famous you are, everyone has an order. And the team said, oh, that's interesting. What if we stoked fandom by celebrating their orders? So the first thing he did was a, tea, was a, a Super Bowl ad that show, showcased famous orders from famous people. Like Kim Kardashian eats chicken nuggets with honey. <laughs> Magic Johnson eats a filet of fish. Whoopi Goldberg eats a Big Mac. right? And the, the, the fans responded really well to that. So he partnered with Travis Scott, who for long has been a huge fan of McDonald's. We've known that from videos. Mm -hmm. We've seen him, et cetera. So we took his meal and we called the Cactus Jack. And the response was crazy. In the first two weeks, we broke McDonald's supply chain of quarter pounder ingredients. Sheesh. People were stealing posters off the wall. Yeah, I remember when that. When the restaurant yep. was closed. <laughs> and we added $50 million to incremental revenue for McDonald's in the first month. And Wall Street added $10 billion to McDonald's market cap. Wow, that's wild. Wild. So McDonald's yeah. is like, okay, we this is we this got works. a thing here. Yeah, exactly. Let's get Cardi B and Offset in That's here. right. <laughs> and J Balvin and Mariah Carey and Sweetie. And like and, and this thing was become this we call it famous orders, but it's really about community orders. These weren't new products. Mm -hmm. They were just reframed through a cultural lens. And people go, Oh, that's my order. <laughs> right, and That's they feel amazing. much, much closer to to each other and to the brand. All right, well, Dr. Marcus Collins, and by the way, he is a professor at the Ross School of Business at University of Michigan. Those students, I know, are so grateful to have you. <laughs> Honestly, you so as a much. professor, because those classes are fun. I had an opportunity to sit with you also. You crushed it, by the while way. While I was there, I had a great time. Yeah. And the book, For the Culture, The Power Behind What We Buy, What We Do, and Who We Want to Be. Y'all will love it because you get to see the inside stories be behind some of the campaigns and some of the brands that you already know and love and I found it to be quite insightful and entertaining. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Wait Up With Ye and when we come back, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Candace, you made it through a Wednesday. Hump day celebration. Oh, yes, indeed. And shout out to Meg Thee Stallion. I see she is bringing Glorilla on tour with her. I love that. That's a good combo. Yeah. I'm excited so, to see them. That'll be some real fun girl power. Yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you again to Marcus Collins for joining us for a Wealth Wednesday. His book for the culture is available now. I thought it was a great conversation. I have a marketing background also mm -hmm. so talking about working with different brands and how he they had the inception of the beehive mm -hmm. that actually came from the fans they had their whole own name and whole own little club right but they decided the beehive was organic let's tap in yes. to what's happening online and this is when it was first starting yeah and it's grown Ugh. exponentially they yeah. arguably the beehive is is like the biggest I mean the Swifties yeah. the Barbs yeah the Navy the the I would <laughs> the say stands. the barbs and the beehive are probably the biggest. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, so there's so many things and so many gems that you could learn from Marcus Collins. So make sure y'all pick up his book and anything on him. I think is well worth watching. And of course, we are going to have Clay from Love Is Blind yes. on the show tomorrow. So he'll have an opportunity to tell his side of things. Tell his side of things. You were definitely giving him the side eye. Well, he he deserved it. A 
little bit. As he but, knows, you know, right? Yes. <laughs> There might be some resolve at the end. You got to tune in. But there's a lot of things coming out now. Love is Blind, the aftermath. Right. That should be... Uh, should be like, studied. Yes. <laughs> a Harvard st- review. Yes. All right. Well, again, we will be back tomorrow. But you guys, of course, have the last word. My secret is I secretly hate my best friend. I hate being friends with her. Good morning, Angela Yee. Just wanted to tell you, this is Kim Cobb with Cooking with Bo. And I just started watching your podcast over the last several days. So I've seen about 10 episodes. And I just want to say that I really, really, really enjoyed watching these episodes. They were uplifting, inspiring, and fun, full of laughter. Just not the typical podcast. Going way up, up, up with Angela Yee.